Hi everyone, Sef Alchemist here. First of all, I would like to thank you very much for your support, for your subscriptions, for your likes. It truly means a lot to me. So today it's going to be a message from your ancestors. I'm going to invite you to pick one of these two piles here, either the one I'm holding with this hand or the one I'm holding with this hand right here. Feel free to pick whichever one uh, you resonate with the most. I'm going to start with this pile right here. So a message from your ancestors. What do they want you to know? What message do they have for you? Let's get right to it. Okay, these are the ancestors that are gifted, that watch over you, that uh, care for you. And because we do have a lot of ancestors, but this message is going to come specifically from the ancestors that are gifted. Ancestors that were responsible for your gifts, for your abilities, they passed them on to you and they helped you throughout your uh, journey either in this lifetime or in past lives as well. So these are the cards that I picked here for you. We have a Major Arcana, the World card, the Universe. This is a representation of your ancestors. They're with you, they're guiding you, they're protecting you. They're, they love you and they want to tell you that they're always um, around you. They try to guide you along the way. Every time you feel confused and you feel like you don't know which path is the right one for you, they try to show it to you and um, give you synchronicities, signs, and many hints to uh, align you back with the true path for you. And here we have the seven of fire or the seven of wands. They want you to step in the unknown. They want you to embrace your darkness. They want you to always uh, follow that intuition that comes to you, which usually leads to the unknown. All the decisions that usually are beneficial for you are going to be related to the unknown to things you don't know to things that you need to research to uh, new uh, concepts new dogmas new ideas not what you have learned not the things that you have been um, programmed to believe all of these societal programs that were engraved in your mind since childhood or from your family from your entourage they want you to leave that behind and step in the unknown and here we have the uh this is the page of uh water or the page of cups reversed meaning that they want you to use your intuition and your mind more than your emotions when you receive a sign or a synchronicity to act on something in your life you usually think with your emotions you're like well that goes against what i was taught well, my religion doesn't allow this. Well, my family is not going to agree because they taught me otherwise. Oh, my boss told me this so I can't do this because that's what I'm used to do. So your ancestors are telling you this is not the, the right way to approach things. Sometimes you have to just go with the flow and follow the unknown. And here this is the fire element because this is a representation of spirit. It's also the representation of the animus aspect of alchemy or the anima, which is um, that thing that, that triggers us or that fires us to take action. It's what gives us passion. It's what gives us ambition and motivation. This thing that we can't really comprehend. It's some sort of energy that's there. It's basically what gives life to your soul, if you will. That's why the trinity of alchemy is body, soul, and spirit. It was interpreted before as mind or translated as mind, but I don't agree. I think it's soul. That's why animus, the real translation of animus or anima is that soul part because in Latin, it's corpus animus spiritus. It's not, it's not the mind. So animus is the soul part. It's that thing that makes you who you are, that makes you alive, that gives you that energy 
that wants to thrive. It's represented by this seven of wands and that energy is fiery. The nature of that energy is from the fire element. So spirit wants you to use that to figure out what it is that you need to do and to not just keep doing things like a robot as how you've been programmed. Oh, I've been used to do this this way since I was 20 years old, so I'm gonna keep doing it the same way. No, try different options and always follow the signs and the synchronicities because they're sent to you for a reason. Let's pull a couple more cards. Here we have the Queen of Fire or the Queen of Wands. You are the Queen, you are the Empress, you are powerful and you have a lot of energy within you. You have the wisdom of the dragon within you. You see you're holding the, the dragon under your feet. The, here the dragon or the serpent is the representation of knowledge, of wisdom, of the occult. The dragon represents the occult, it represents darkness, what's hidden, what's not seen. It's Lucifer. Lucifer, the bringer of light. He's the bringer of light through the knowledge that he shared with Adam and Eve. The knowledge that you have free will, the knowledge that life is how you make it. The knowledge that there's so much more to life than just staying in a garden and doing nothing. Um, so you have that knowledge within you, the knowledge of the unseen, the knowledge of the unknown, the knowledge of darkness. So your ancestors are saying, use that, reach it within you because you have it and the world needs it. Beautiful, beautiful energy. And we have the death card. It's time for you to transform. Death, number 13, one of my favorite major arcanas. And 13 um, is a beautiful number. It's the number of transformation. And it is connected to uh, many events that happened in ancient history. Uh, I have a video on this channel called Friday 13th. It explains what it means, what's the origin of number 13 and Friday 13, and what it really uh, uh, means in the uh, occult sciences. There's no coincidence that the major arcana number 13 um, uh, represents the death card, because dying only means that you're going to be reborn. So death uh, is not something negative here. Death represents transformation. You moving from one stage to the new one. Uh, you leaving the old behind, as represented in this beautiful alchemical depiction here. You live in the land of the dead. You see, this, this is where you were before. This is the old you, that's why they're all skeletons, because they're dead. And you're harnessing knowledge, the dragon of the knowledge, the same dragon of knowledge and wisdom, the knowledge of the occult. An occult simply means hidden, not cult, occult. They're two complete different words. Don't mix them up because some stupid people mix them up. But be educated and uh, be sophisticated, be civilized, learn. Don't just hear things and start making things up. This is the occult. Occult means hidden. That's where you find answers. That's where you find secrets. That's where you find um, the knowledge of the dragon, okay? And uh, this usually exists in darkness. That's why it's this part here is in the dark. And at, as you cultivate this and you learn it and it becomes part of you, you ascend and you become the flower, the flower of life. You become the light that everyone is talking about because light is not about uh, uh, illuminating something. Light is about you becoming the outcome, the result of what you have learned from your transformation. The transformation that starts after you left the old you behind. It becomes a corpse. It's not who you are anymore. It's like uh, in, those, uh, pr in the previous video, I showed some photos of me uh, before. That person is this. It's not me. It's not who I am. It doesn't represent anything about me anymore. It's just a dead corpse. And same for you. Whoever you were or you're about to become. So when you become it, the old version of you is here. Because, but you have work to do. See this? 
you have you have a lot of work to do and this is represented in alchemy with the three stages of alchemy which is nigredo albedo rubedo the darkness stage here and then when you become the flower and you reach the light you, it's the albedo stage it's the white stage and then rubedo the reddening is when you reach your philosopher's stone so that's the stage after so your ancestors are telling you this is the process you're uh, having to go through and it's beautiful and they're proud of you for taking on this because not everyone can it's not easy um, it takes a lot of effort it takes a lot of energy but uh, keep on uh, moving forward on this path and here again we have the eight of wands and the eight of fire look how many fire um, cards came up here the seven of wands the eight of wands and we have the queen of wands as well so the eight of wands here represents abundance strength power infinity and i want to show the bottom of the deck the bottom of the deck also uh have the strength card strength card which also is a fire element <laughs> so you who picked this strong feminine divine energy you're probably uh, a queen a woman and you are a fire probably a fire sign as well uh, astrological sign because there's so much fire here so you're either leo and aries or a sagittarius this is amazing but this is who you are this is a representation of who you truly are and your ancestors they're commanding you on this they're proud of you and they want you to continue with your transformation and keep that fire within you alive so we're gonna move on to the other pile this is what I have for the first pile the other pile that I was holding with my this hand here my left hand let's get right to it what does spirit want you to know Rasen gan shis amoleren sokrek is ifen kus mach aron zistrach imechen. Oh, interesting. In very interesting, not just uh, very interesting because we have fire again. <laughs> Um, I did shuffle the cards quite a lot and they're two separate piles for some reason fire came up again so we have the uh, what is it, the six of earth six of Pentacles and then we have the knight of fire or knight of wands and the three of fire so in this pile your ancestors are saying that in this lifetime you are blessed and you are meant for um, success, for power, for fame, for just doing the right thing and being so good at it, for being a powerful soul that will accomplish a lot of things, that will help a lot of people. Um, and someone who's very successful, someone who's very abundant, someone who has a lot of money, someone who is a knight, someone who represents power, and someone who's very um they embody the courage someone who's very courageous here the it's it's like the opposite of the other uh pile this is a very strong masculine divine energy so the, the first pile was feminine divine this is the masculine divine this is a very strong and it's represented here you see the knight who's riding um uh the horse he's a male and there's also the dragon like i think in the first pile there was also something similar with the queen of wands holding the dragon under here he is about to uh, uh, kill the dragon because he's so powerful and he's so courageous and this dragon is the same it's the dragon of uh, power because the dragon of power is different from the dragon of knowledge that's why this dragon is red the other dragon was green because the color of the occult, the color of the hidden is green. It 
here the dragon is red. So this represents power, that powerful energy. And you being able to defeat the dragon that's very powerful just shows how much energy you have. So you're this very glorious warrior and you can accomplish anything you want in this lifetime. That's what your ancestors are telling you. Unbelievable energy coming from this pile. Unbelievable energy. Here we have these six of uh, wands uh, reversed. And earlier we have the six of pentacles and here the six of wands. Here your ancestors are saying that you're very grounded. You're very uh, connected to earth, to the physical reality, to material things. You understand how this realm works. That's why you're very successful at it. That's why you know how it works. That's why you're the knight, you're powerful. And people trust you. People uh, want to work with you. They want to be around you. So the six of air reversed here, meaning that you're lacking connection to spirit a little bit. The first pile, they're pretty connected to spirit. Um, they're following the signs, they're following the intuition that comes from the ancestors and from the spirit guides. Here, you are glorious in the physical realm, but you're lacking uh, connection to the spirit realm. You're not translating properly uh, the signs. This is not a bad thing. It's not a, a negative thing, but your ancestors wants you to take that into consideration to realize that you need to start uh, deciphering the signs that come from spirit because they're also as important as the physical reality. And here we have the lover's card, but it came up reversed. Uh, it's a major arcana. It's a lot of uh, lover's card, by the way, is number six. See how many sixes we had here? This one, the six of air, reversed. The lover's card is number six, but reversed. And the first card that I actually pulled from the first three cards is six of pentacles, upright. You see what we have here? Six, six, six. And six, six, six is the number of balance, number of harmony, it's the number of love. It's not what religious dogma has been uh, indoctrinating people for centuries to believe in order to engender fear um, and control in humans. Six is a beautiful number. So the teachings I'm giving you here is that six is a beautiful number. Six is not a bad number. It's not negative. It represents balance, harmony, love, love, and love. It's why the major arcana, the lovers is numbered six. It's for a reason. You want to know, uh, learn the occult knowledge, study the major arcanas. I keep saying it over and over and over. The numbers on the major arcanas, they're not random. They're precisely attributed to each card for a reason and for a specific meaning. So that's why the lovers are, is number six. Um, and here the lovers, you need the balance between the divine feminine and divine masculine. That's why balance. They're both necessary. Yin yang, darkness and light. Number six. <laughs> so, why do we have the lovers reversed here? It's because again, this reflects that balance that you're lacking to connect to the spirit realm, as I mentioned earlier. Um, maybe you don't have love in your life. Maybe you're, you don't know how. Uh, I'm hearing from your ancestors the fact that you're not reaching that harmonious balance between the divine ma masculine and divine feminine. Your divine masculine here is empowering everything. You need to bring in some of the divine feminine in your life. You need that balance. See this harmony and balance you see in Metatron's cube, which is also represented by number six. Uh, I even made a video about it in my other channel, Sacred Geometry, that Metatron cube uh, is represented by number six. It's here. It also, the hexagram, which I have on this ring right here, the hexagram is also number six. So this is the most balanced shape. This hexagram is the most balanced shape in the whole universe. There is nothing, it's the most perfect shape, the most balanced shape. No matter where you look at it, 
there's nothing wrong with it. It's just perfect, like to an extreme level. And it's represented by number six. So in order for you to reach this, you have to start connecting to spirit. And spirit is the divine feminine. Spirit is the representation of the divine feminine. So your ancestors are telling you to connect to nature. Meditation can help you. Yoga. Uh, do some Reiki. Because uh, Reiki practitioners or healers, they can help you balance out your energy and trigger that divine feminine energy within you. Uh, try to do the things that represent spirit. Let me elaborate more. Here again, look what came up here, the Ace of Wands. You're like, it's just you're over dominated uh, by the fiery energy within you. You're like so powerful. Uh, but your ancestors are telling you this also, since it's the Ace of Wands, is the representation of you starting a new phase in your life where you're going to learn more about spirit, where you're going to learn to decipher the signs of spirit. Um, I'm hearing connect to nature, go to nature, uh, go for hikes, listen to the water, observe the water, meditate, spend some time with yourself, uh, try to go to places that are quiet with less people, try to spend time by yourself away from people like uh, I'm visualizing you on a weekend in a cabin in the forest away from the city no noise it's just the trees you hear the birds you hear the sounds of the forest maybe there's a creek nearby and you hear the water you have to do that connect to nature connect to nature and spend some time away from people that's gonna help you connect to spirit activate that divine feminine within you which is not super activated and connect into spirit because the more you connect to nature the more you start hearing and listening to the signs that come from spirit they become clearer and clearer to you let's pick a couple more cards here we have the queen of earth came up here um, this is your other half that's going to complement you this is the divine feminine within you uh, what I'm hearing is that your energy is very grounded but the divine feminine if you can reach it if you can activate it uh, it's also grounded within you so you're just a grounded person all in all you're very grounded uh, but your divine feminine needs to be activated and it will be and your ancestors are telling you just work on your spiritual growth and you will reach the queen of earth that's within you which is necessary for your um, enlightenment if you will so just keep doing the work and you will reach this queen within you and when you reach this queen within you um, things are going to make sense to you because I'm hearing that there's many things that don't make sense to you right now. Many things that are just in the air and you don't understand them. But the moment you're going to reach this divine feminine queen, everything is going to clear out. The first water card, the first cups card that came up in this pile. <laughs> the seven of cups. And your ancestors are saying, it's time for you to as soon as I picked this card, what I heard is it's time for you to just dive into the unknown. I think the first pile also had like a seven, but I don't remember which uh, element it was. But it's time for you to dive into the unknown, connect to nature, to water, to the elements, because we are made up of the elements. You know that humans, they're nothing but earth, fire, water and air. That's what we are. That's who we are. No more, no less. So spirit wants you to understand that, to experience it. Try to make it part of your daily life and dive in the unknown. Just dive in the, in the water. Actually swimming. As, as I'm saying this, as I'm saying dive, obviously 
swimming comes to mind. Swimming, not in a swimming pool, swimming in like a lake or in the ocean, in the beach is gonna help you activate just that spirit within you. Because when you swim in nature, uh, it's a form of meditation. You're forgetting everything. You're just floating. You're moving in water. And it's something that can help you connect to spirit. And that's what your ancestors want you to know. I'm going to stop here. Thank you very much for tuning in. I truly appreciate it. Let me know in the comment section if this reading resonates. And I'll see you in the next reading. Such anjos ren. Kileres und is nach Rosselleres muss ich